Hi, SmartPak fans. I'm Dr. Lydia Gray, the Staff Veterinarian and Medical Director for SmartPak. Sitting next to me is Dr. Frank Andrews. Rather than me go through and mess everything up, I'm going to have you introduce yourself. So, okay, please. So, I'm Dr. Frank Andrews. Um, I am currently at uh, Louisiana State University. Go Tigers! <laughs> And uh, so I am uh, actually a designated professor at LVMA, which is a Louisiana Veterinary Medical Association Equine Committee professor and director of the Equine Health Studies Program. I'm also an equine internal medicine specialist. Um, I don't do any surgery, so anything that's medical. And then I am uh, also the section chief of the uh, equine medicine section. My goodness, he's a very smart guy. So um, one of the things he's very smart about is research. So one of the studies you did was on Smart Gut Ultra, right, for us. But I guess I went to you for that because I had read all of your papers, all of them, a lot of them, on uh, the work you had done, the original work on omeprazole when it became known as the branded GastroGuard. So, I mean, you've been doing, you've been doing work on um, equine gastric ulcer syndrome for years. That's, that's your research interest, is that fair to say? Right, and yeah, since 1989, actually, uh, we started with Astra Pharmaceuticals. Uh, they wow. wanted to uh, look at a, a unique drug, uh, omeprazole, in horses, which is the gastroguard, yeah. yeah. uh, and nobody really had any experience in that uh, in in treatment of ulcers in horses using that particular those products. Yeah. And so we got started uh, back uh, very early into that uh, into those studies, and then uh, finally. Uh, work towards FDA approval of GastroGuard, which was approved in 1999, and we were the lead investigative team at the University so of Tennessee cool. so, in uh, approval yeah, of GastroGuard. Um, so today we're going to talk about a new research study that we asked you to do to look at the effects of two ingredients that are, I guess, trending is how you'd explain them: uh, turmeric and devil's claw. Just really briefly, can you just describe that study and why we did it and? how you did and what we found. So the, the study that we were asked to do uh, was a safety study. Mm -hmm. um, evidently there is some concern about uh, turmeric and uh, devil's claw mm -hmm. um, causing ulcers in horses. It's used a lot uh, in the uh, horse competition mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to relieve pain uh, and inflammation and so there is some thought uh, since it uh, re reduces pain and inflammation it could be uh, misconstrued as a non anti-inflammatory or aspirin or ibuprofen type uh, drug which uh, makes people concerned that it might cause ulcers uh, in horses that's, as it's reducing that's inflammation. That's where that concern came yeah. from. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. And so we were asked to, uh, uh, to look at a group of horses. We have 90 horses in our herd and they're all rescued thoroughbreds. So we uh, brought 12 of those horses up um, and then uh, scoped them. We have a uh, three uh, nine foot endoscope that we go down and you look were going to say three meter <laughs> yeah three meter yeah nine foot endoscope so we uh, look at the stomach we actually have to fast the horses and we look at the stomach so we can uh, grade the ulcers uh, mm -hmm. in the stomach and we brought the horses in uh, we scoped uh, 12 of them and then we uh, classified the ulcers scored the ulcers and then we uh, divided them into two groups one one group uh, got the tumorac and devil's claw in mm -hmm. The Smart Pack supplement, and the other group uh, just got uh, grain and then a supplement that didn't contain the tumor. Right, so the inactive ingredients. Yep, yeah. inactive ingredients. And then uh, we uh, scoped the horses at 14 days and 28 days after uh, while they were on uh, the supplements. And we did find that there was a reduction in ulcer scores both in the control horses and in the tumor act, devil's mm -hmm. claw horses, mm -hmm. uh, which is makes the uh, that claim that they that causes ulcers, um, you know, not not substantiated by right. the research. Right. Cool. Um, maybe we should talk a little bit about what turmeric and devil's claw are, besides just being trendy ingredients. They're they're actually not trendy. They've been around for thousands of years. Um, turmeric is very popular with horse owners as well as humans. Um, they use it for for joints, for GI discomfort, for immune support, all sorts of things. The active ingredient in turmeric is something called curcumin, and that's a curcuminoid. Um, and so that has been found through research to have effect on 
um, joints, like I said, respiratory system also, and then really throughout the body. So it's, it's a very popular ingredient. Now you've done some research on curcumin, curcuminoids. Can you talk about that? Are you free to talk about that? Okay. Sure, yeah, we completed a study uh, for uh, um, looking at a curcumin, actually curcumin that's uh, present in a supplement okay. um, because we were interested in how it affects uh, horses that are lame. And so um, since we have a rescued thoroughbred population, most of them have arthritis. Uh, they were likely slow racers at the racetrack. Right. Um, and they, uh, so we enrolled horses that had a single joint arthritis. Okay. So they might so have it's very a clean. Yeah, yeah. fetlock or carpus arthritis. Uh, we enrolled them in the study, uh, and then carpus we, being knee. Yep, the Go knee, on. right? <laughs> yep, the the proverbial knee. So, um, but we enrolled the horses, and then we um, treated half of them uh, with the curcumin, okay. uh, and then the other half uh, had control. Okay. They had the sup the. Placebo, ingredients, yeah, well, yeah, the placebo, yeah. and uh, then we uh, ran them across the force plate. We have a force plate, and we also had a, a board certified surgeon. Can you explain the what a force plate is? Okay, a force plate is um, is a basically a square um, uh, inlaid. Um, um, plate that we put in the cement and it actually is wired uh, to a computer and we can actually determine uh, the vertical force in the horse as it walks across or runs across that, that force plate. So uh, in other words if a horse is lame it's going to put less weight on its lame limb mm -hmm. and so the, the peak force um, is going to be less in that limb. So we were able to measure that. It's an objective way to measure lameness in horses. And uh, we measured that. And there was a, in the, uh, in seven of the 10 horses on the curcumin, um, we uh, ended up showing uh, that they improved their lameness by 5%, yeah. which is a significant difference in their lameness. And at the same time, you also looked at the safety of that and found pretty much the same thing as in our study that there were no ill effects to the, the turmeric, the curcumin, right. on the horse's stomach. Right, and we uh, treated the horses for 30 days. So we scoped them at day zero before they had the treatment, and then we scoped them at day 30, and they there was a, a reduction in both the controls and the treated group uh, as far as ulcer scores. Nice. So that's turmeric and curcumin. Let's talk a little bit about uh, devil's claw. And this ingredient you'll find mainly in joint supplements because it, it affects um, both joint and muscle discomfort, uh, mobility, and even there's been some studies where it affects uh, inflammatory markers. So there's, there's some nice research on that. What's been your um, experience with Devil's Claw? Yeah, I don't have really any experience uh, with Devil's Claw as far as the other research. than this study. Yeah. And uh, but you know, when you look at the literature, and uh, a lot of these are extrapolated. A lot of the the effects on uh, the horse are extrapolated from the human literature. Right. Um, but uh, in looking at the uh, the effects of uh, Devil's Claw, there's not a lot of um, uh, not there. Mostly, it's information on inflammatory bowel disease. It uh, knocks down these uh, inflammatory mediators, um, and I was, you know, looking and trying to figure out why they might think it causes ulcers. Yeah. Uh, but you know, people um, people take it uh, to prevent ulcers and to prevent uh, inflammatory bowel Gosh. disease or to treat inflammatory bowel disease. Yeah. Um, and these supplements are used in con in conjunction with uh, pharma pharmacologic agents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to improve uh, the uh, effects, so yeah. uh, so these are uh, so I I couldn't find any reason for them to be uh, okay. to be uh, most of them are anti-inflammatory and yeah. I think that's the when you come back to the anti-inflammatory properties you know you want to they they think they substitute for these aspirin and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory ibuprofen type products and so if you're taking those those are ulcerogenic but certainly not devil's claw or and or ulcerogenic tumor. meaning right. causing yeah causing ulcers, ulcers. Yeah. yes yeah. yes so yeah so with, with with our study that combined both turmeric and devil's claw and we took two supplements and combined them to get really high levels like higher than you'll see in a single product in the market and then other studies you've done it looks like turmeric and devil's claw are pretty they they their horses have no problem maintaining stomach health on those two ingredients one last thing about devil's claw it is prohibited by some competitive organizations so you may want to contact them and find out and if it is prohibited you want to withdraw about seven to ten days before the competition so right. now 
Um, what's the next step? With the, after you do the research, the work is not done, um, what are you doing now? Yeah, probably the hardest part is uh, is writing the manuscript and uh, you know submitting which it you for do, publication. Not me. <laughs> right, right. So we uh, will write the manuscript, uh, which actually it's uh, almost written. Uh, I have a research uh, associate, a veterinarian, a research intern who uh, helps me write. Uh, so he's already written the manuscript. I just have to edit it, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll put it in uh, in the final form and then submit it to a referee journal. Mm -hmm. It's likely a journal that uh, is uh, that all the the AEP members uh, mm -hmm. get the American mm -hmm. Association of Equine Practitioners. There's a publication that they all get, so we can disseminate that information. And uh, when you say to referee, what does what does that mean? Uh, so it's uh, peer reviewed uh, by. Uh, so when you submit the manuscript, um, instead of uh, so what they do is they send that manuscript to experts in the field, mm -hmm. usually two. Uh, sometimes we've had up to five in some, uh, but two. Uh, Peers uh, in the uh, that are internal medicine specialists, or maybe they have uh, specialties in um, you know in these uh, um, alternative medicines, yep, yep. and they'll review the manuscript. They make comments and they suggest whether it would be accepted or accepted with major minor, minor revisions. And then uh, you kind of it comes back to you, to me, and then I address those minor mm -hmm. major revisions. And then uh, the editor is actually the one who accepts the manuscript, right. and then it comes out in publication. Uh, really online first and then um, in the uh, and that process can take a, a long time like a year two years you know depending on yeah. how many edits and revisions and reviews right yeah. and the nice thing the nice thing about the current literature is that everything uh, in most of the journals is online early view so these articles uh, even though they're not in a printed form, mm -hmm. they're usually on the website within a several months mm -hmm. after you submit it, after it's accepted. Now the thing is that the, the average horse owner is not going to be able to review them though. You have right. to have a subscription to the journal. So sure. uh, because it takes a long time to see them and because the people may not have access, you've written us sort of a one page summary of this research and that is available right now on the SmartPak website and we'll put that link up for you. Thank you, Dr. Andrews, for walking us through that research. Um, so now you have a better understanding of Devil's Law and turmeric. You can go on our website to read more about it. Have a great ride.